Hey everyone, before we get into the show, I'm taking a moment to say we did it. This episode marks one year for the show. That's 52 episodes. That's one year of guests, one year of unique stories, one year of a ton of advice, one year of celebrating people, our differences, and the power of ideas, and one year of people listening to me experiment with an idea and a dream. So I need to thank all of you, really. Without all of you, I'd be talking to myself. Thank you to all of my listeners, fans, guests, everyone following me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, everyone that's been cheering me on, and everyone that's loving the show. It really means a lot to me. Now, after a year of doing this show, I'm excited for year two. Starting next week, I'll be sharing a few changes to the show. Don't worry, it still has great guests and the same great content. I'm just connecting the show with everything else I'm doing and with the stuff I'll be launching very soon later this year to tell a better story. I'm so excited about year two and the cool stuff I have planned. So stay tuned till next week. Okay, now to the show. Hey everyone, it's Christopher Swan and welcome to this week's episode of Living Your Journey. Each week, I have this amazing opportunity to chat with people that love what they do in life. They understand their passions and their direction. It's kind of like they're following their North Star. They also know their story may change, but they understand that they're on a journey every day. On the show today is Val Weisler. She founded the Validation Project, originally to help kids that were being bullied in school to now an international organization that unites teenagers in 105 countries to solve social justice issues. Of course, this sounds amazing, and it really is. But there's another ingredient here that makes this story even more interesting. Val started the Validation Project when she was 14 years old, when she was being bullied in school herself. Now, at 19, she's busier than ever. She's leading and expanding her organization, She's an ambassador for the U.S. Department of State, and she's still in college. Val and I talk about her backstory, why she created the Validation Project, how it has evolved, how these experiences are shaping her career and life, balancing everything, advice, and even more. I've been wanting to talk to Val for a while, and I'm so glad we had this chat. To be honest, I was happily surprised by how this 19-year-old is following her passions, because at 19, I was nowhere near this focused. Also, I really love how Val's work and ideas are personal. They stem from situations she's experienced, and she wants to make sure that her generation has a voice in solving them. I had so much fun connecting with Val, and I'm so very glad to share her story. Everyone, meet Val. Valerie, it's so good to have you on the show. Welcome. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. So I'm in love with everything that you've been doing with the Validation Project. I've been following you for a while. I definitely have seen things pop up like on Instagram and these different partners you've worked with. So I've just I've just kind of been amazed by these things that you're doing. And I've really wanted to meet you and talk about all this amazing work. I mean, you know this. We've been talking for the last few months about, about <laughs> some of this. So I want to I just want to jump right in if we could do that. Totally. I would love to. Great. Okay. So I would love for you in your words, because I could do it, but I want you to say, um, would you describe what the Validation Project is? Sure. So the Validation Project I've been running uh, since I was in my freshman year of high school. Uh, I started it because I was getting bullied and I wanted to create a space where my generation could not only feel safe, but also supported enough to go for those dreams that we're thinking of. And now the Validation Project, four years later, is a global organization, and we work with around 6,000 teenagers in 105 countries, and we partner them with mentors and give them social justice projects. So the word validate is really what we focus on. So the first part, we focus on validating themselves and self-worth. So we partner them with this mentor to show them that they have that worth. And then we give them social justice projects to teach them how to go out into the world and use that worth to solve the problems that we're dealing with. You mentioned that you were bullied in school. So I'd love to go backwards a little bit and say the, you know, ask the why start the validation project. But what was the 
the essence of that moment like four years ago? Yeah. So I was getting bullied pretty brutally at school because I was actually pretty shy. I know I wouldn't seem like it now, but I would have to get up a lot of strength even to say my name in class. And because of that, I got bullied by these group of girls at my school and they would put notes in my locker telling me I should leave school. And I kind of branded myself with this identity of like, I don't really belong here. I'm not worth it. And I felt bad for myself, and I thought that I was the only person who was dealing with this. And then one day I was walking through my hallway, and I saw this this other kid getting bullied. And I it was like I woke up from this really long nap. And I went up to him, and I said, hey, you matter. I'm dealing with the same thing as you are, and maybe if we work together, we could do something about this. And he actually started to cry and told me that that day he was planning to commit suicide. uh, And that someone coming up to him woke him up and made him realize that maybe there was the sense of hope to go on and that people saw him, he wasn't invisible. And for me, that moment really changed my life because it not only made me realize that other people were dealing with what I was dealing with, it made me realize that people were hanging by a thread and that thread was two words you could say to someone that you didn't even know five seconds ago. And he told me that I really validated him and that word really stuck with me. And I went home and I Googled the word And I decided that this idea of confirming something could be such a powerful thing for my generation because I didn't want to change people. I just wanted to confirm the skills and the passions they already had inside of them. Um, And that's kind of amazing, too. I mean, that's I I love that you did that, even found the maybe the courage to go do that, especially knowing that you were so shy then. I, you know, for the folks that don't know, I just would love to say it because we talk about school. Like, this was high school for you. You were, what, 15, 16, something like that? I was I was 14, oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> so, so I think, and I knew that, you know, this was definitely more in your younger years. But I think it's kind of amazing to even think about that. You know, when bullying has been such a topic in the last few years, I, what's interesting about you, Valerie, is that you like are living proof like you you weren't just like oh here's a story we've read in the news here's somebody who's actually experienced it and didn't want it to continue so okay you go home you um you you know look at the word you think about it you you think about how maybe working together how do you go from that kind of idea of like i don't i'm not happy anymore i can see other people going through this to I'm going to do something about that. Like what was the transition or the start of it? Well, it first started out that it was just my school and the Validation Project's website was a pretty obvious like made by a 14 year old website. And kids from (laughs) my school would email me and they'd be like, I'm getting bullied. And I'd be like, okay, like let's have lunch together. And we would sit in the cafeteria and we'd talk about what they were going through and about how maybe we could fix it. And then all of a sudden, I started realizing that this could be something much more powerful. And that instead of just focusing on the bullying, focusing on the damage that was already done, I wanted to focus in on that idea of validation and the idea of all the passions that these kids had inside of them. And I was really at my lowest point at the time. I thought to myself, well, nothing can really get worse than it already is. So what do I have to lose by starting to sign my email CEO and trying to turn this into a movement? So I was really lucky in that unlike a lot of other kids that are bullied, I had somewhat of a support system. I am Jewish and I had my Jewish youth group. So I started to reach out to my friends that were in that group and started to ask them if they would maybe help be like the leadership behind the validation project because I knew I couldn't do math, but my friend would look great as a financial assistant. And my other friend was amazing at Instagram when at the time I couldn't even snag like 30 likes on a photo. So we started to build this, um, (laughs) this, executive board that were all my friends. Uh, And then the validation project from that and from the press that we got from that, even though it's just like local newspaper article, we started getting emails from kids that were just in my school. All of a sudden we started getting emails from kids that were all over New York and then soon in Oklahoma and Texas. And next thing I know in Spain and Uganda, because it just was kind of like this domino effect because it wasn't an anti-bullying organization, it was like a proactive kindness organization. So instead of focusing in on what most schools focus in on when they do anti-bullying curriculum, which is like, this is the definition of bullying, you're a victim, this is how you tolerate people, we focus in on, okay, yes, you've struggled with something, how do we go and turn that into something that you could actually help other people? 
That's a really interesting take on that. I, I love that. It's like this kindness piece of it. Was there any kind of connection to the, I guess, the victim of bullying and the person who's actually bullying them? It's not just for the victim. Because obviously a bully doesn't get up one morning and is like, oh, I really want to make people feel bad today, even though my life is like A+. plus. No one does that. Someone hurts other people because they're hurt in another part of their life. So I knew that the girls that were bullying me every day, like one of them didn't have a dad and the other one like went home to a house that didn't feel like a home. So I knew that they were all dealing with things I learned, you know, years later on. And it makes sense because people when they don't have a program like the validation project to go put their energy into something positive, their first thought is that they're angry and they put it into something negative, like hurting someone smaller. So that's what we really focused on from the start as well, was making sure that it wasn't just geared toward the victim and the bully wasn't just like pushed off to the side, that it was about creating a connection between the bullies and the victims to make them be able to power through together and make a change in their community as one. I love that because it it really treats everybody as kind of this equal, like, because it's about people, you know, it's not about the, the specific act. Of, of what's happening. And I think that is a really unusual thing because it, it, it's different than like what you talked about the curriculum that maybe was already in the schools. This makes me think a little bit about there's so many wonderful organizations out there that help people that are support groups that do different things, especially for youth. Had you thought to yourself, why start something versus like maybe looking for other organizations? Was it that you know, there wasn't something exactly answering this or, or yeah, what was it for you that said, I I need to do this? For me, it was that most of the things that we're dealing with uh, matters of bullying, we're dealing with anti-bullying. So a lot of reactive, the damage has already been done. How do we fix it instead of how are we going to be proactive and make sure it never happens. But also I wanted there to be somewhat of a space where my generation had a voice and every organization I saw as wonderful as they are, were run by people that haven't been in high school for 20 plus years. So I wanted to make something that it wasn't like the teenagers are, you know, the behind the scenes people and there's adults running it. I wanted it to be that we're a fully fledged teenage organization by teenagers for teenagers so that we could really design what we want our world to look like. I love that. I love, 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 love that. Because it's really about, that's kind of what my point was earlier when I just said, you've been through it. Like, you know, I love that you kind of at 14 years old were like, hey, (laughs) I I have this brilliant idea. So it looks like, you know, the last couple of years have been landmark for getting the message out. Yes. I, I'm really wondering, like, over that time, as this has evolved and grown, has there been any really big surprises from, you know, I'm going through this, I'm living the the truth of this experience to a few years later, and now look what I'm doing? Any kind of big surprises along the way? I mean, I definitely never expected it to be this big. Um, when I was signing my email CEO at 14, I didn't even know what CEO stood for. I was just like, oh, this sounds official and I run an organization. So I guess so. Um, <laughs> That's so honest. I love that. <laughs> but I, I really didn't think it was going to go anywhere. I was kind of, it was like my savior. I really do think that it saved my life. I don't know where I would be if I didn't have the validation project because it showed me that I have worth and I have a passion. But if I tapped my 14 year old self on the shoulder today and was like, hey, this is gonna turn into something really big, I don't think I would have believed it. And I also think I would have probably been too scared to start it, Um, which I think is the beauty of starting something when you're young, because you kind of have that innocence. And sadly, that like disbelief in yourself where you really don't think it's going to become something. So, you know, I was putting in in all my effort into this because I wasn't afraid of it turning into something huge. And there's definitely been so many surprises along the way. I mean, just how much it's grown so quickly has been a surprise. Like the fact that in like the first four months of me leading it, we had a thousand teenagers working with us was crazy to me, but definitely more surprises also. I mean, there's been surprises of like the starts of things that we've started working with. In the beginning, we were really focused in on bullying, but then we started to see that as more teenagers came to us from different countries, they were coming to us with issues besides bullying. You know, some teen- teenagers didn't have a school to be bullied in because they were a girl in a developing country and they weren't allowed to have an education or 
a teenager was afraid to come out as gay in Oklahoma or struggling with all these, you know, inner self-hate sort of things. And that was a really interesting shift in the validation project because all of a sudden, instead of just focusing on bullying, we were focusing in on whatever struggle you're dealing with, come to us with it and we're going to help you solve it. And then we're going to teach you how to solve that issue on a global level. So the validation project really grew from this simple pro-kindness organization to this kind of like global youth empowerment organization where we have teenagers coming to us with issues that are the most prominent issues globally today. And we're working with them to not only solve it so that they can go on and have a good life, but also now bringing it to the State Department. Because one of the biggest surprises probably is that uh, this summer I was appointed as a speaking ambassador for the State Department. So those kind of things are probably the biggest surprises that we have the power and the connections now to really work with leadership to be able to make sure that my generation is being taken seriously. Yeah, I would imagine that would be a huge surprise of just the if you the hindsight now to look at where you're at, you know, where it was this bullying piece now to this kind of yeah. like social justice and global issues. How do you help to solve those kind of big global issues per person around the around the world? Because I know it's just it's just a couple of you within your the validation project. Clearly, you have connections with other other organizations and groups and stuff, but how do you actually do that? Maybe you could speak to the curriculum that you guys are embedding in areas and maybe just kind of like the, the nitty gritty of a little bit of it. Yeah, I think a perfect example of that is one of the teenagers that was one of our first examples of, you know, working with a global issue. Her name is Valeria, and she grew up on top of one of the highest mountain in, mountains in Peru in a rural village there. And she came to us saying, I'm in high school, I'm going to graduate high school, but all my teachers are telling me that once I leave high school, I'm expected to go right back to my village and be a housewife for the rest of my life. (laughs) And she, word by word, was like, that's not my cup of tea. And we were like, me neither. (laughs) So she came to us and she was like, what can I do? Because I want to be a fashion designer. And we worked with her, we partnered her with Seventeen Magazine to start this campaign called This Is For The Girls. And she shared on a piece of paper what, using photography and had all her peers share what they've struggled with as girls, but also why they are proud to be a girl. And we took it from her little village and had girls in my suburb of New York do it and all over the U.S. and Canada and other countries. And the campaign got so much publicity and started to spread that now her school not only uses validation project curriculum that we designed for them that talks about women's rights and women's possibilities in other places, but also Valeria has gone on to be a freshman at the Fashion Institute of Technology in New York City. So that was a situation that when it came to us, I really didn't know what we were going to do. But what we really try to focus in on is, okay, what is this individual skill and what are they trying to accomplish? And for Valeria, her skill was creativity and photography and art. And she was trying to accomplish an education. And by doing that on an individual level and sharing her mantra of being proud of being a girl with the rest of the world, we solved this problem and hopefully set the scene for other villages and other countries that, you know, think that girls don't deserve an education. That's amazing. I love that story. You know, I know you're in college now. You're also running the validation project and you are so focused on these wonderful, like, you know, global situations and helping individuals around the world. Has this shaped has it really shaped what you're going to do with your life? Meaning like uh, clearly it has, but did you even know that you were going to be in kind of a, a social justice or social good kind of activist role? I guess that's where I'm going because as as a 14 year old, you are probably exploring at that point, like, what do I love to do? What does that look like? Not everybody knows at that age that they say, I want to do good for the world. So I'm I'm curious about how this has kind of helped shape your professional career or outlook of where you want to go? That's a great question. Honestly, it really has, uh, you know, made my decision of what I want to do. So when I was starting to lead the validation project, one of the ways that helped me get out of my shell and helped me break my shyness was a TV club at my school. It was a class that I could take. And at first, I really liked being behind the camera and doing all the video stuff. But then they were like, if you want to pass the class, you have to get in front of the camera. So I started doing the news for my school and doing like fake news anchor stuff. 
And I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed talking to people. I enjoyed like wording what I was going to say. And I thought that I wanted to be a journalist. I thought that I wanted to be a on the ground in developing countries journalist, which my Jewish mother was not very happy about. <laughs> sure. <laughs> but um, then I had this experience because of the validation project. I received a scholarship to go to Southeast Asia the summer before my senior year of high school. And I traveled to Laos, Myanmar, Vietnam, and Thailand and started new validation project chapters and also visited ones that we had there. And when I was there, I taught English at a village in Myanmar. And I soon realized that once we left, the education of those children left. And I had brought my video camera and I was going to make a documentary about what was going on there because I was so into journalism. But then I had this moment there that I realized I could never be unbiased about these situations of social justice and global issues. I couldn't stand there and just give the facts to someone. I wanted to be the person who was still on the ground, but fixing them instead of just reporting about them, which is equally as important. So that's, for me, the moment that I realized that I wanted to be a advocate for children and specifically about education. So I started to get really passionate about education then. And that's what led me to the State Department because I went kind of crazy and I emailed every staff member of the White (laughs) House (laughs) from the janitor to the head of the Obama administration. (laughs) And then the same thing for the State Department. And finally, uh, I was really lucky and one of my role models who works in government connected me with someone at the State Department who reached out to me and said that they'd like to meet me. And his name is Andy, and he's the youth supervisor for the State Department. And a year later, his relationship with me led to being appointed to be the speaking ambassador. But I really never would have been led to any of that if I hadn't been working with the Validation Project and been given these opportunities to see the lack of resources for educational systems overseas and also the lack of resources for educational systems in America. So that's what I'm really passionate about right now. I'm actually working on designing my own major at school. I go to Muhlenberg College, which is in Pennsylvania, and I'm working to make my major inequalities of education. And then I want to go on to go into educational policy and either work at the Department of Education or the State Department. But I still plan to run the validation project as well. And one day walking into an office that's not my kitchen table or my dorm and having it be our headquarters <laughs> would be pretty cool. Um, so that's what I want to do. And I there's like a fire inside of me for all of that. But I don't think that I would have ever ignited that fire or ignited it way too late um, if it hadn't been for leading this organization at such a young age. So I'm really lucky. Here's what I find really interesting about all this. I just, I was listening to all this and thinking, gosh, there's a theme here and maybe a couple. And and one of them is exposure. Like you needed to be aware of what was out there to be able to make the the options. And I think that's kind of probably obvious for most people. But it, what I bring it up is I think some of what you're doing with the validation project, not only helping people solve those problems, but you're also creating awareness or exposing these, these, you know, the youth to these different things in the world. If you have people that want to do different careers, but they don't know much about them, like you're also bringing some of that, which is some of what has happened for you. So it's, it's almost like you're doing what you know, or what you've experienced as well. I don't know. Have you looked at it that way? That's kind of how I see it. Yeah, no, I mean, that's a really good point. Um, because I think that's super important for anyone, but especially like what you're saying, in high school, or even younger, most teenagers don't get that exposure to what they want to do. And it's very ironic because at 18 or younger, we're told that we're expected to get on that college track, know what we want to major in, write an essay about how our life has been impacted to get into this school. And we sit there and we realize that we've never had the experience to know if we want to be a doctor or a lawyer or an artist. Um, So that's what the validation project is really revolved around is not changing teenagers but waking up those passions inside of them and giving them opportunities like working with the person they want to be when they grow up whether that's a choreographer or a chef or an author to be like hey like look this person can do this and now you have this person who believes in you and you can go and you can not only become this occupation or whatever you want to do but you also have the power to use those skills that were always inside of you to go and help other people. I also heard you, you know, you mentioned Andy about this, you know, kind of this relationship, but it almost sounds like him and there must be others. I just think about maybe mentors or people that influence you, maybe, you know, some sort of, you know, somebody you look up to. 
starting at such a young age, was this, did you, was this family? Did you, were there people kind of in the public eye that kind of you maybe even looked up to to said, Hey, look at what they're doing. And I can do some of this as well. I'm just curious about like, what are the things that you felt or the people that influenced you from maybe the beginning to even where you're at today? Yeah, that's a great question. I'm really lucky. Uh, my mother is a really powerful figure in my life. She's one of the people that I'm closest to. And growing up, she always tried to enforce us with this idea that you should look at the world and not just see the problems, but also how you could create solutions. So whenever we'd like walk, we live close to New York City. If we like were walking down the street, you know, we wouldn't stop. If we saw a homeless person, we would make sure we were stopping and giving them a sandwich or doing something in our town locally. So she has been a really bright light for all of this. And now that I run the validation project, when I used to be home living there in high school, our mornings would be spent with us having tea and her being like, hey, like, I just like bought a new blazer. What if you had a campaign called Tra- Trail Blazers where you gave blazers to low-income girls? <laughs> so she always comes with me with ideas, which is wonderful. And then another mentor that I have in my life is this woman, Jessica Abo, who is a news anchor in New York City. And she's also an actress uh, that's been in Gossip Girl and Spider-Man and a lot of other shows. And now she just launched a new fashion line uh, for social justice, which is awesome. And I met her at a conference for my Jewish youth group when I was in my sophomore year of high school. And I was actually uh, still getting bullied a little bit. And I was also dealing with being gay and I was in the closet and I didn't know how to come out to anyone. And I saw Jessica and she gave this speech about being bullied, about all the community service and social justice work she does. And I tweeted at her and then she called me up on stage and it led to a lunch date in New York City a few weeks later. And now she's like a big sister to me and I'm going to be going to her wedding in July. (laughs) So she's been there through me through everything. And I think it's really important when you have a mentor, no matter what age you are, that they support you professionally, but they also support you personally. Because if my perf- my personal life is, you know, at wit's end, then the validation project isn't going to be successful. So if I'm wearing a mask every day, like I did when I was struggling with coming out, then obviously the validation project isn't going to be A plus because the person leading it isn't believing in herself. So those mentors that helped me, my mother, Jessica, Andy, they've really shaped me both on both facets of my life uh, to make sure that I'm still a kid, that I'm still Val, I can still freak out over a dog, (laughs) but also that the validation project is something that continues to grow. You made a really good point there as well about this kind of professionally mentors should support you, but also maybe personally as well. And we were talking about this earlier about this kind of, you know, I made fun of like our, our authentic social lives on social right. media, <laughs> like they're authentic, but only maybe just the good stuff. And, you know, when we open up and share the vulnerable things, that's where I think real power happens. I read one, uh, one place about the validation project that you guys and maybe maybe I didn't read it, maybe it was a speech that you gave, but about encouraging individuality. And that really struck with me because I just, I think that's so powerful. Like, uh, I really love that different is better and like you can be yourself and love yourself and be all those things. So is there some connection there? As you talked about this, this mentor piece about supporting you professionally and personally, like, do you think it's important that we're, we show up as a whole person versus like, Hey, when you're at work, you're, you're one thing when you're, you know, in personal life, you're the other what kind of connection or this individuality that you see um, combine here? Yeah, I think that's a really important thing that you're not two different people. I used to always joke when the validation project started to get big, my mom would say she felt like I was Hannah Montana <laughs> because <laughs> I'm visualizing because, that now. That's awesome. Yeah, a little <laughs> because, you know, I would come home and I would do my homework and I play with my dogs, but then I would be on a train to the city to have a meeting with the NFL or with 17. And I struggled a lot with the first maybe two years of the validation project with making sure that I was one person. I really separated myself because I was still struggling to find friends in high school. I was just getting over being bullied. I didn't really want my personal life and the hardships of it to come into this seemingly perfect authentic life, like you said, of the validation project. Uh, But then when it started to come to when I uh, came out, and when I started to share my own life as I was leading the validation project, that's really when the validation project skyrocketed. And when we hit a 1000 chapters that our curriculum was in, we started working with celebrities and doing so many more things, because the person leading it me 
wasn't, you know, leading these two separate lives. I was learning to combine them. And that's why the way that we lead our program is telling teenagers to not just come to us with their skills, but to also come to us with their struggles, because we don't want them to feel like they have to put on this face of a resume and all these successes that they've had and hide the thing that they're dealing with to be able to get that mentor and get that social justice project. We tell them, tell us what you're going through. Tell us what the hardest thing in your life is right now. And we're going to not only help you with that, but show you that you have this worth and give you this opportunity to be a whole person that's making a whole lot of good in the world. Mm, That's powerful. And I think such an important message. Okay, so let me ask you this question because you... I love that you're showing up and you're doing all these things. You're also very busy. <laughs> you know, I mentioned this earlier, right? We both talked that you were in college. So you're running the validation project. You're connecting with all these people. You're working with the State Department. I'm like, how do you balance it all to be successful? You know, like, and I don't mean successful in that kind of generic sort of, you know, I do great things. So I'm successful or I make a lot of money, that sort of thing. But like, how are you able to accomplish the things that you want to do, like and stay balanced? And like, not that I'm looking for a trick or like, where's the top five tips, but like, how do you make that work? It's definitely one of the biggest things that I struggled with. But I think also the best thing I've learned through these past four years was time management and not just time management to make sure I have time to like do my homework and stuff, but time management to make sure that I'm I'm being present and I'm having joy in everything I do. And it's not just like this day to day, like got to get through these next six hours. And that's something that I really had to teach myself how to do because in the first part of leading the validation project, that was the one side of my life that was awesome. And the rest of my life was really tough going to school and not really having a lot of friends and struggling with all that. So now you're right. (laughs) I am very busy. And there are definitely days where it's very hard. Um, I'm really lucky. I mean, I go to a lot of, I get to speak to a lot of schools and a lot of companies. A couple of weeks ago, I gave nine speeches in four days. Oh my Um, gosh. Yeah. (laughs) I know, Chris. I know. (laughs) Uh, And I had this, I had this moment after I did it. First of all, I took a long nap. And then I was like, having this moment and I was like, okay, like this was a lot. And like, I feel so lucky that I'm doing this, but I'm also like really drained right now. And I had a person on my trip. Her name's Amanda. She's another mentor of mine that I've taken on every trip with me. And we were like, okay, like we're tired. Like I just did all these speeches. Like we're going to leave the validation project in the room right now. And we're going to go out and get ice cream. And that's kind of the way that I try to uh, make sure that I stay balanced in two parts of my life is to make sure that I'm dedicating as much time to be a college kid and to focus on my friends and my family and my other passions as I am to make sure that I'm ready for my phone call with the State Department and that I'm planning our next campaign because I don't, I never want to get to the point where I have to be drained to do something for myself. And I think that that's a really important lesson when you're leading your own movement, whether your movement is being a mother or your movement is leading an organization. So that's kind of how I'm trying. And it's definitely a adventure and like a DIY project every day. Um, (laughs) But that's what I try to do. And I'm really lucky. I think surrounding yourself by the kind of people you want the characteristics of is super important. So at my school and in my own life, my friends and my uh, girlfriend and everyone in my life are people that are confident, they're independent, and they're looking at the world with like an utter source of passion for whatever it is they do. And I think that that really helps me out because especially at school, I don't feel like the odd one out for being passionate. And I think that that's something that your listeners, you know, should definitely take away is that you have to make sure that you're not the only person with a fire in your friend group. Because like in high school, I was leading the validation project and I was loving it. But I had to shut myself down when I was with the few friends that I had because I was the only person that was doing something. Everyone else was kind of just like going to the next party and like, you know, planning the movie for the weekend. Um, So I kind of felt like this like weirdo for caring about something. And now I'm at school where one of my friends writes for the school newspaper and another one writes for BuzzFeed and another one is like creating her documentary. But we still all freak out over dogs and watch Disney Channel original movies every Friday. (laughs) So I think that's just the most important part of it is to look at yourself kind of like a puzzle and know that you can't get all the pieces until you're focusing on the pieces of your personal life as much as your professional life. 
Mm. And I would, that all resonates with me and being a little bit, a lot more older than you. I would say like, don't let go of that too. Like it's, that stuff is so important. I literally just wrote something, I think a day or so ago on Instagram about, about this kind of like push and pull, like take a break, go do the other things. You need the right balance to be, I think, as you said, like present in the moment of whatever you're doing. So everything brings you joy. I love that you talked about the joy part. So such wise advice. Like I'm still living that today. (laughs) <laughs> here's the thing I love to ask people because it's the not so fun stuff because yeah. we can talk about passion until like I don't know what till the cows come home as they say um, <laughs> because it's easy and it's fun and people love to be lifted up but the one thing I always love to know from people too and I just think about these things that you've seen and done that there's probably some things there for you but what holds you back like what gets in your way Yeah, that's a great question. And definitely, you're right, very much harder to talk about than passion. I think the biggest person that usually holds me back is actually myself. Um, I think self doubt is something that I struggle with immensely. And, you know, when people see like the 14 year old who started her own organization, like they would imagine that like your life is perfect. And that, you know, everything you do is just like super easy. And I think we were talking about this before. It's like, People only see what you post on Instagram or what you post on Facebook. So they don't really know the the doubt that comes into it or like the hours of being drained after you're doing it as much as you love it. So I think that self-doubt is a giant thing that holds me back. Uh, also, the unknown. Uh, starting it so early was a wonderful thing, but is also was very scary as well because I have my whole life ahead of me. I'm not starting this at an age where it's like, you know, in five years, like I wouldn't be doing anything anyway. So I'm starting it. I still have four years of college left ahead of me. And at first I used to look at that as like, this is so scary. Like, you know, I have to, I have to keep this up and make sure it continues to grow. And like, what if it fails? What if like this idea that I had at 14 ends and like, I am the person behind that as much as I was behind their successes. So to try to remind myself to look at that instead of like, what if this fails is what if this kicks ass? And like that, I think that failure is as much an important lesson and a medal to wear that at least you did something as is passion and joy and all of that. So instead of I've tried and it's definitely like a like I said, a DIY process every day. But um, instead of looking at the possibility of failure and this, the fear of unknown as something that holds me back. I'm newly trying to teach myself to look at it as something exciting like that. We have our whole life ahead of us and like we could really make this into something even more than it is. And the other thing that holds me back that where I'm trying to get better at, but it was definitely hard, especially when I was younger was the people who tell me no, because I started this at 14 and I was like wearing like a blazer from like JC Penny walking into my first meeting with like Fortune 500 CEOs, like a bunch of old guys. Um, and I'm walking in there and I'm like a freshman in high school. And it was very easy for them to look at me and just see like a little girl with a stupid idea and to turn me down. But what I say every time I speak at schools is that you have to try to use the people who tell you no as your fuel to prove them wrong. So there's been a lot of no's before yeses with the validation project. And before that campaign comes to fruition or that person we're working with ends up being a done deal, there's been a lot of, you know, no, sorry, we can't do that. Or we don't want to do this. Or how do you even know this is going to work? But I've gotten through all of those so far. So just trying to take it day by day. And whenever people tell me no, or look at me with that look of like, are you sure you could do this? To just kind of think of that as my ammunition to one day be able to say yes, like I did do this. There were some really great points in there. I love all that. The one thing I did, I literally wrote it down as you said it (laughs) was, what if this kicks ass? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and I just thought, <laughs> that's brilliant, because it is the, the failure thing that really does get in the way for so many of us. And right. But look at it the other way, like, yeah, but what if it's amazing? Like, really? Like, then what? It's, I don't even think we think about that. Well, maybe we daydream. Now, tell me about what's next for the Validation Project. You guys have done a ton, but I know that there might be some upcoming campaigns or some really great work that you are excited about. Yeah, there's a lot of cool things coming up for us. One of the biggest things is we're launching a celebrity ambassador program. So one of the things that the Validation Project does, in addition to this 
one-on-one -on -one mentoring and community service. We have curriculum in schools, so any school can start a chapter and become a validation project chapter. And then we also have these global campaigns that come from ideas like Valeria's that we want to skyrocket into something bigger. And we started to realize that these campaigns are incredible, but we could make so much more momentum with them if we had celebrities that were able to amplify the teenagers' voices. So the beginning of this year, our PR person, Olivia, who's one of my best friends, started reaching out to celebrities, kind of like how I reached out to the White House and was kind of just bamming out those emails. Um, <laughs> and we did, <laughs> we got a lot of no's, Chris, um, but we also, I'm sure. <laughs> we, we started to get a lot of yeses and got these incredible celebrities on board who now when we have campaigns or hopefully soon conferences, we'll be able to be these spokesperson, spoke people for the beliefs of the validation project and maybe be able to be mentors to our teenagers. So that's uh, the first exciting thing that we're doing. And we're launching the celebrities as they come through our program. So we've launched a couple so far and we're hoping to get more throughout the year. And then the next thing that's really exciting is this summer, I'm going to primarily be a camp counselor at my old camp, Vermont Day Camp, which is awesome. But in the middle of that, I'm going to be speaking at the Education First Conference in Milan, Italy. So Education First is an amazing organization that really lies within a lot of the values of the Validation Project. They provide trips so, uh, revolved around community service and social justice globally for high school students. So they have all these trips that you could take with your classes to learn about food security in Italy or learn about globalization in Peru. And in addition to that, they have these global leadership summits where all these teenagers come together to take what they learned on these trips and turn them into real live solutions. So the validation project is going to be represented there and I'm going to be speaking about what I do and doing workshops with them about how to turn their ideas into realities, which is going to be a really exciting thing. And hopefully we'll be able to get the validation project in a lot more chapters by working with these high school students as well. Yeah, those are great partnerships. I love the celebrity piece too. That will really amplify. And I've seen that a couple of them already jump, jumped on. Yeah, yeah. If people want to find out more about the validation project or to follow along with you and the organization, where should they do that? Great question. So we just redid our website. So you could go to thevalidationproject.org and that's where you could find out how to start a chapter. You could email us with your ideas. We just launched a blog. Uh, we just had this campaign for Women's History Month called Women Who Will. So you could read up about a lot of powerful women that we think are going to make history. So that's how you could find out all of that. And then in addition, our social media, follow us on Instagram, The Validation Project. Facebook, you could like us at The Validation Project, and Twitter, where The Validate. And that's where you could find out not only what's going on with us, but also see the behind the scenes, especially on Instagram, of what it's like uh, an average day of planning a campaign or see our travel experiences going from state to state or country to country as well. Wonderful. And we'll include all of that in the show notes and we'll put it on the website so it'll be easy to find you. Valerie, thank you so much for sharing today. This has really been just, I, you can hear your passion and everything that you're saying and doing. And it does sound like this wild ride of like your life. Like it just sounds wonderful. So thank you for sharing. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. So what did you think? Any new ideas? Are you gonna try something new? I'm always left with ideas and feeling great after these conversations. These guests really energize me. If you want to share your thoughts about the guest or how the show sparked a new idea, I'd love to hear it. You can actually call me and leave me a message at 1-707-347-9312. That's 1-707-347-9312. Just include your name in a brief message and you may even be featured on a future show. If you want to follow along with me and see behind the scenes fun and my adventures, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at me Christopher. That's M E C H R I S T O P H E R. You can also follow along with Accidental Information on Instagram and Facebook at Accidental Information and on Twitter at Accidental Info. Also, we publish original articles weekly about following your passions, getting creative, and a lot more, all at accidentalinformation.com. 
Lastly, if you love the show and you want to spread the goodness around, go tell a friend about it. As in literally text someone or email it to them. I'd love it. Also, please make sure you're subscribed to receive new episodes automatically each week. Thanks again for joining the conversation. Okay, that's it. We'll talk again next week.